All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So today we have a rock star with us. I am super excited with her presence. Um, this is such close to my heart, this whole, uh, the, the guest here, the discussion, today's discussion. The reason is that she is the professor of medicine and the uh, head of, or the chairperson of the medical department in, in King Edward Medical University. And that is a university where I graduated from. It used to be called King Edward Medical College at that time. So um, a lots of respect and love for my alma mater and lots of respect and love for Dr. Shabir, who is with us today. Her, um, so my apologies that we are a little late or quite late. It is half an hour. We were having some technical difficulties. So at this time, the setup is the following. One, we have her with us. She is on WhatsApp. So somehow the mic and the audio could not work with StreamYard. So we have her on WhatsApp. So the audio quality may be dipping once in a while. My apologies for that. We would re request her to come join us once more as well. So with this, let me very quickly introduce three or four things. Number one, introduction of Dr. Shabir, Professor Dr. Shabir. Number two, KE. So now there are a few memories of KE for her as well. She is actively working there. For me, the memories when I graduated. Her college, Fatima Jana Medical College, and a little bit of my association with that college. And then we would start talking about COVID. Interesting uh, for me is that Dr. Shabir, Professor Shabir decided that she would like to discuss how COVID-19 has shaken up the healthcare system for good and the role of telemedicine. So the evolution of medical field, the changes in the field, the challenges of the field. I think this is a fascinating discussion, not just the COVID management itself. So with this, I'm going to very quickly. Um, so Dr. Dr. Shabir, Professor Shabir, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you so much, Dr. Mubin. Uh, can you hear me? Absolutely. I can hear you. And I'm hoping that through my phone, <laughs> WhatsApp, uh, Cool Beans are able to hear you as well. So let me very quickly thank you, so thank you very much for being here. So I'm going to do this, uh, Professor Shabir. I'm going to, first of all, very quickly show, I'm trying to place <laughs> the phone over here. I'm going to show very quickly the King Edward. So Cool Beans, this is King Edward Medical college it used to be college it is a university these pictures are uh, k e k e m united.com's pictures these are not mine it is their copyrighted i just am so excited this is my college this used to be the administration department i think it is still the administration department um, we used to go there all the time and uh, sit down uh, this used to be the hall in which our exams used to be and then uh, this was the famous dome of the administrative department. I wanted to show you this place. So this, these were studies. There is a place called, so I can't find that picture right away, but there is a place called Zero Point where we used to sit down, all of us, and make fun of each other and, and, and do fun things. So lots of memories with KE. I want to tell you about this as well. This used to be called Oval Ground. And when we would start a new class, the first year when they would come in, they would we'll take them to this Oval Ground and you know make fool of them and, and play with them. And then our annual sports used to, to be held there as well. So I remember once I presented martial arts in there. So this is the King Edward Medical University. And Dr. Bilkis is the uh, Professor Bilkis Shabir is the professor there and the head of uh, a chairperson of medical uh, internal medicine department. This is the KE's uh, website and King Edward's website. So the current chancellor is Professor Khaled Masood Gondal. He has been very big on telemedicine and uh, Professor Shabir is actually heading that department as well. So very, very accomplished and established. This is Wikipedia about King Edward. And then this is Fatima Jinnah Medical College, where Dr. Shabir, uh, Professor Shabir, um, graduated from. 
and my association with Fatima Jana. Fatima Jana is a girls only college, at least at that time it was girls only. And uh, the association is that next to Fatima Jana, my brother and I started teaching for the first time as supplementary education for students. And that is how we got into teaching about 30 years ago. And that is how I am still teaching. So Fatima Jana students, if they had not supported us at that time, not studied from us, I don't think I will be a teacher today. So Fatima Jana College and their students have a big contribution to uh, this all work. And also King Edward Medical University, that was established in 1860 by uh, a British government that were at, at that time ruling this uh, Indian subcontinent. And from there, it is one of the oldest and the best colleges. So I would now stop and I want to I wanna welcome Dr. Uh, Professor Shabir once more and request her. So Professor Shabir, let's start from this. How are your day-to-day -day activities look like in this, in this COVID era? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mabi. And before I start, I was really enjoying your uh, you know, you talking about your alma mater. And uh, this is very specific about King Edward Medical College and University, that the graduates remember very fondly the gateways and the pathways and the oval ground. And uh, just to add to you that uh, since the college has now been upgraded into a university, it is not only dispersing knowledge and utilizing knowledge for service delivery, but it is also creating knowledge. So we are very much into research. We are very much into creation of new departments. And uh, today I'll be talking a little about telemedicine, which is very dear to my heart and more so to our Vice Chancellor, Professor Khalid Masuko. Excellent. And uh, uh, Professor Shabir, I forgot to actually quickly introduce your credentials. That is such an important thing. My apologies. So Cool Beans, Professor Shabir, I'm just so excited. This is my college. This is my alma mater and the and, and a professor from there. She is the best graduate from Fatima Jana Medical College, 1997. She did her FCPS. FCPS is a post-graduation in Pakistan in her first attempt. Usually FCPS is a tough program and it is very difficult to clear that easily. So clearing that in her first attempt, if I go back to my medical student life, I would be looking up to her in, a, in fascination that she did this in her first attempt. Then teaching experience for 25 years, currently professor of medicine and chairperson of department of medicine at KE. During COVID, she fought no less than a man as frontliner in COVID wards, ICUs, fearlessly serving patients till their last breaths extended unprecedented services as in charge telemedicine department at King Edward Medical University, Lahore, managing innumerable patients globally to their utmost satisfaction. And she is a renowned, she's renowned for services in medical education, training, research, seminars, webinars, and as a Corona expert for Punjab government. And then she also received Governor's Award for her unprecedented services during COVID-19. Once again, you can tell she is a rock star. My apologies that I had not uh, gone through your credentials before. So Professor Shabir, back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mubeen. And I think that uh, with the grace of Allah Almighty, one of the most uh, important credential of mine is the surname Shabir. Uh, I'm the daughter of a uh, professor of uh, surgery. And uh, I am mentioning it here because uh, it's very much related to COVID. You would ask how. Yeah. COVID was announced, everybody knows, as pandemic on the 26th of December, 2019. Correct. In Wuhan. And... Uh, it was on the 25th of December, 2019, that I lost my father oh, so to sorry. a chronic illness. Mashallah, he lived a 
good life and uh, he's got many students and great man i yeah. just uh, hear his students and patients talk about him and i pray that he rests in the higher place in heaven but i lost him on the 25th and this disease came into the world or rather it was announced as a pandemic on the 26th of december mm-hmm. and it was on the 26th of february that we had the first patient of covid in pakistan mm-hmm. and it was my along with a wife chancellor professor khalim sud gondal whom i very distinctly remember both of us wearing those kits for the first time and uh, going into the avh you would be remember remembering the albert victor hospital uh, they are the, that is a private wing of uh, mayo hospital yes which is the affiliated hospital the biggest affiliated hospital with king edward medical university there are seven in total and mayo hospital is biggest so the patients were isolated on one side of the wing and both of us went to see that patient that was on the 26th of february and following that we had the first upsurge of covid hmm. now it was a time when all the world was in denial hmm. so i remember people coming on for on the television and saying ye ek so so in urdu it they would say ye aam kisam ka flu hai or in other words in english because i, I, I know it's a uh, international forum they would say that it's a flu of the usual type and it's just a viral illness and uh, it's a short lived self limiting illness and would resolve on its own while the poor china was crying its eyes out at that moment and then we saw the first upsurge um this was how it came into pakistan and it was a period of two to three weeks when we had hundreds and hundreds of patients teaming in and king edward medical university along with its three affiliated hospitals was the biggest center catering for this disease in the province of punjab and the second biggest across the country if you could uh, you know sort of uh, move to the next slide i want to sh- you know, go go through the journey how we you know move forward um i've got a video here and um, as you play it yes uh, you can see that's us that's me actually uh, the uh, the picture of the patient has been taken with their consent you can see all of us some of us are wearing kits the uh, relatives they had to be inside because there was shortage of short shortage of staff this is one of the terrible and in fact not so terrible ct scans of one of the patients we saw even worse and um, as we move forward you would see that this was the sort of uh, patient we can move on to the next if you wish these were the sort of patients you were seeing this is again again one of the icus we started off with single icu we started off with those isolation wards then we had to move on to the icus following the icus there was one icu two icu currently there are six icus running at mayo hospital and two icus with two other affiliated hospitals you can see us tired the time was passing this is one of my picture it's a very interesting one and this was when i was absolutely you know tired and uh, i was sitting on the sofa and you can see my cat it was it was like sort of feeling very sorry for me mm-hmm. and i slept like anything so right. this was how our story went you can see various shots where you know we were going through the uh, the epidemic and uh, we can move on so this is another view of another icu and another this is uh, if you could go back the previous picture is of my mentor and my teacher professor khalid musu gonda uh he's a surgeon he's a vice he's the vice chancellor but he, his specialty is general surgery but believe you he's also been my teacher at fatma jinnah medical uh, college 
and at many stages of my life following that. And I think during times of COVID, he was the main person behind the whole of the medical fraternity, especially at New Hospital and King Edward Medical University. He was a strength behind us. So whenever we were, you know, sort of tired, he would be there to be with us. He was there to support us. And he was there to support even the employees who got COVID. If you move on, the next picture is, um, if you move back, move back, there's one more picture. And you can, you know, um, uh, there was Professor Sakib Saeed. He's currently, uh, this is Professor Khalid Masood Gondal and myself. We are at a webinar. The next picture is of Professor Sakib Saeed. He is the head of pulmonology and currently is also the dean of King Edward Medical College as well as Mew Hospital. And he served like anything. He was like shoulder with us at every difficult patient, at every difficult moment we had in the ICU. So we, uh, these are two people who were, you know, backbone behind this uh, struggle of uh, COVID. So this is myself. This patient is about to pass away. You can see we ran, we were running short of sort of resources, but we tried to stand up as much as possible. You know, Pakistan is a poor country, and as compared to the developed countries, I think that uh, we made use maximum of the resources available. And I think all our doctors, all our paramedical, all our nurses have to be saluted for how they fought, and they are still fighting against the disease. You can see everybody is trying their best, and we can, you know, sort of move <coughs> faster. And uh, so that I go on to the next. Now, this is a very beautiful picture. Professor Khalid Masood was awarded the Pride of Performance Award by the President of Pakistan for his unprecedented services in COVID. And uh, uh, he attributes this to his faculty members and doctors who were with him. So this is a beautiful picture. Again, we can move on to the next one. This is actually one of the, we had about uh, 28 and a half thousand deaths in COVID over the last one and a half years. And this picture is that of Professor Mustafa Kamal Pasha. He was the vice chancellor, chancellor of uh, Nishtar Medical University and posthumously he was awarded Sitara Shujaat, that is a that is again a presidential award on the same date, that is the 23rd of uh, 2021, 23rd of March. And he happens to be my first cousin as well. And we were very actively uh, involved in his management. It was during the earlier days, it was on the 15th of July that he passed away. And um, <clears throat> it was. I'm so sorry uh, for your loss. An impractical case, very sadly. So. Yeah. Uh, but uh, along with him, we lost about 1,000 doctors and nurses during this flight. Very sorry for your yeah. loss. And, and this is such a brave time and such a heroic time that these doctors, nurses throughout the world, they have Absolutely. been... Uh, look, we are sitting at home and I go out for coffee and I get afraid that I would get... COVID. And here you are, doctors, nurses, uh, paramedics, who are exposed every day. You have to care for yourself, protect yourself, and then make sure that the patients are protected as well. That that takes lots of guts and bravery. So thank you very much. Yes, I would agree with you, Dr. Mubina. There was not a single doctor or, uh, you know, the nurse, nurse is, or amongst the uh, you know, paramedics who said no. So this is something, you're very right, they were very brave. We are going home, facing our children, our elderly parents, and uh, still you're not saying no. So uh, all over the world, I mean, everybody, you know, has to be paid ready for that. This is, uh, you know, the governor of uh, Punjab is very kind enough to acknowledge our services at King Edward Medical University for telemedicine. And uh, we can you know, stop on the one so that I don't uh, look at the same <laughs> <laughs> Very 
but great <laughs> Thank you so much, and this is the person behind the show, my father. And obviously, the family matters a lot. You can see my children. Yes. And they are actually enjoying the barbecue of the last eve we had with our dear father. And uh, yeah, this is. It's, I think. Yes, if I am anything, if I have done anything, it's because of. You, Abu, Abu is the name for father. We fondly call our fathers Abu in Urdu. Yeah. So I actually put all my services to this man, Professor Shubhi Naru. And if I could move on to another man in my life, the second hero of my life. So this is the second hero of my life. Is also a professor of surgery at Gujranwala Medical University, Medical College, uh, Dr. Habib Kader. And uh, he has been very supportive. My husband has been very supportive throughout. And I think without this, uh, you know, support of a family, you cannot move on. So um, next, uh, I think it would be the last slide. And uh, that would be, so this is my father. And as I said, everything I am is because of father so um you know uh, we can move on to the next slide um, i'll just uh, tell you so so covid was setting in and uh, i told you in february mid, uh, end of february the first patient had come in and three weeks it took three weeks to have you know thousands of patients within punjab and it was at that time that the governor of punjab chaudhry mohammed sarwar he decided he had been in uk as a parliamentarian for about 37 years. And he had seen telemedicine, and he had been part of the service delivery, and had seen telemedicine progress and transgress in UK. That was before uh, COVID. When the number of patients started increasing, the outdoors of all, all the teaching hospitals had to be closed. And it was at that time that it occurred to Chaudhry Muhammad Server, the government, well, that was also the chancellor of the medical universities. That why not start tele corona services hmm. in Punjab? And let, let's start educating the common man. So he called the there are five medical universities in the province of Punjab in Pakistan. He called the vice chancellors of all of them on the 12th of March 2020. And believe me, they were instructed to start tele corona services and it was within 10 hours that these services were initiated at the medical universe so the reason uh, is we had the structure we had the computers what we did was because we had to be innovative we could not you know wait for the perfect to start off with the perfect you know when we started to crawl and the way we started to crawl was we were provided with 10 phone lines, we are a poor country. There are many areas where we don't even have internet connection. I am sitting in one of the elite areas of Lahore, which is a big city of the province of Punjab. And still you can see, I, I, I suppose this connection is not very you know, clean. So you can realize that we are still a country that we depend on landlines, we depend on basic technology, and in some cases, in some remote areas, you may not, not have the, that technology. So what we did was, we provided us with phone lines and phone numbers, and we started off providing tele-corona advice and tele-corona education. And when the vaccine started pouring in into Punjab and Pakistan about tele-vaccination services. So this is how our telemedicine started. We can move on to the next slide. And I want to make a and, comment uh, here, uh, Professor Shabir. Um, this is yeah. interesting for me and for the cool beans as well. That while the pandemic was unfolding and an immense tragedy was occurring, healthcare systems and healthcare policies and healthcare workers they had to rise up. There was no choice. They, they could not say we could stay back at home. And I think Absolutely. this whole thing propelled the technology forward, the services forward. It taught us a lot of lessons as well. So uh, for Pakistan to start telemedicine so fast, 
I used to think that telemedicine would occur in Pakistan five years later, seven years later. And here we are, not only you're doing telemedicine, but now I think you are maturing in that as well. So great work. Dr. Mubin, uh, you must be knowing that uh, famous Muslim sage, Mulana Rumi. Yes. This is for uh, for the, our uh, viewers who might not be, you know, uh, knowing Mulana Rumi. is one of the very famous sages. Um, and uh, he belongs to Turkey. And his uh, what his sayings, they, his sayings have always been paid weightage uh, regarding their death and their, you know, message they give to the common man. One of the sayings say, says, um, the wound is the place where the light enters. I think it was this wound of COVID which shook us, you know, sort of jolted us up yeah. to wake up. So you very correctly said, we woke up with some things and telemedicine was one of them. It was a brain wave which uh, occurred in the mind of the governor and the chancellor. And it propagated as a waveform amongst the various medical universities. And two of the medical universities started folding it in good spirit and a good letter in spirit. One was uh, King Edward Medical University and the other was University of Health Sciences. And King Edward Medical University, uh, by the grace of uh, Allah Almighty, has been able to sustain it till now. So this is something which I think would always be remembered in the history of Punjab, Pakistan, as well as your institute, King Edward Medical University. This is the picture which uh, on the left side, you can see the inauguration which took place on the 18th of May. So you can see the orders were passed on the 12th of May. The inauguration, formal inauguration was on the 18th of May. And you can see the previous pictures telling you how the things started. You can move on to the next slide. And uh, you would be seeing this is the day of uh, inauguration. And uh, you can see our vice chancellor and our medical superintendent of the Mayo Hospital. And this is the place with how it started. We can move on to the next slide. And, and uh, we can move on to the next. I don't have to tell much about telemedicine. Telemedicine is now the medicine of today. And this is so, even I was uh, going through some literature. And I, even in USA, um, I found out that uh, 80 new teleservices have been recognized temporarily by the Medicare and Medicare. Is that right, Dr. Mubi? Yes. And, um, and uh, the utility of telemedicine has increased by 40 times. About 57% of people, of uh, the physicians, are more comfortable in using telehealth uh, during the times of COVID. And 65% are using it as um, using it more as compared to the uh, physical services. So this is the medicine of today. And um, so we started with tele-corona. And now it was a time when the outdoors were closing. And uh, Dr. Mubeen, you have been at Mayo Hospital. You have studied from Mayo Hospital. And you will remember that the overall load, of, because it's a tertiary, care hospital and a teaching hospital. So the overall load of patients extends beyond 15,000 per day. It yeah. includes all the various subspecialties. We used to say, so the, uh, my apologies almost, for the quick interjection, we used to say that if you go to Mayo Hospital and close your eyes and just sit down in the corridors, you would still learn there was so much load of the patients. Absolutely. And you would see the worst form of complicated patients uh, coming from all over Pakistan. And uh, I think for uh, physicians like yourself and uh, our other colleagues who are working abroad, you would see all the complications of all the possible diseases at Mayo Hospital as compared to other countries because you know we have people coming from underprivileged areas and remote areas and districts of uh, pakistan 
So um, it occurred to our vice chancellor. So this was the movement and the vision of a vice chancellor, Professor Khalil Musul Mondal, that if, why not if we can start with telecorona, why not extend our services on to teleopd? So we started off with the telemedicine doctor, telesurgery, telepediatrics, telegyne, telepulmonology, telecardiology, orthopedics. Then we extended on to telenutrition, obesity. Then recently we introduced ophthalmology, teledermatology, ENT, vaccination, and last but not the least, and something which was initiated foremost, that was telepsychiatry. The whole of the population, especially during the first wave, was going into a panic. The attendants and relatives of the patients were going into, uh, you know, crisis, psychological crisis. The doctors and healthcare providers, they were going into stress. And that was when telepsychiatry played a big role. And I really appreciate that by all the departments, but I think telepsychiatry, you know, really played its role especially during the initial two, three waves of COVID. And that uh, so we, is a uh, huge we, service. So my apologies. Um, telepsychiatry. So I feel so blessed that you started this because pandemic, that impacted people in so many ways that psychological health and psychological well-being became a paramount thing. And Thank you very much that you started doing it. I'm sure that there was so much uh, benefit from this to the population. Absolutely. And uh, Dr. Mubi, I would like to share over here that um, initially I mentioned that universities are not only for the dispersion and utilization of knowledge, but also for the creation of knowledge. So just restricting myself to telemedicine, a numerous uh, a number of uh, research articles were uh, written by our colleagues and those of the tele uh, of the psychiatry department, and they shared with us. One of the research said that sixty eight percent of the patients have suffered from anxiety and depression during the COVID. And that was the study of initial six months. And now it's been one and a half years. So no doubt. And uh, if you uh, remember, in general, telehealth and telemedicine over the world started off with telepsychiatry. Psychiatry is, a, is the best mode of... Uh, telemedicine is the best mode of uh, reaching out for psychological support of patients and people. So this is how this is how we started, and you know, I was just sharing with you before the show that now that we are uh, we came across the fourth wave of COVID and we started coming down on it. At the same time, another infectious disease started emerging, and that's dengue. So if I only talk about Mayo Hospital, Doctor Mubeen, in the morning I rounded on one hundred and seven patients of dengue. Wow. All of them, either in dengue hemorrhagic phase or in the dengue shock syndrome. None of the admitted patients are in simple dengue fever. Okay. So we are having a huge crisis of dengue now. And Tony Dengue was established in the August of last year. It is now working 24 by 7 to provide help and guidance to the patients and to tell them when to, where, what are the red uh, signs of leaky phase of dengue and when to approach the health authorities. So this is how, how the story of telemedicine goes. If we could move on to the next slide. Um, so this is I talked about. We approach started on with landline services, on mobile, on WhatsApp, WhatsApp videos, WhatsApp audios, Skype, Skype calls. So this was something very popular. Now the patients are able to make online appointment. If you, you just in the beginning opened the website of King Edward Medical University, you can also open the website of telemedicine there and you can get an online appointment. You can change an online appointment. And uh, uh, Dr. Mubeen, uh, we have been criticized for the fact that this is obviously not the best. I know this is not the best. We do not as yet 
at the gadgetry to be able to examine a patient sitting across the screen, we are not as yet equipped with that. But, but I'll tell you how far we have gone. We can move on to the next slide. And you would be pleased that your country. So these are the contact numbers. Yeah, these are present on our website and they can be utilized for anybody. Anybody across the world, across the world, totally free of charge. Wow. So now it's an absolute free service and uh, it is utilized. We can move on to the next slide. And um, uh, uh, before I go into the statistics, you can see more than 14 and a half. Uh, thousand people have availed the services till now. These are statistics of today's morning. Congratulations. And uh, Dr. Um, when you open the portal up, there are three ways you can open the portal. One is by the administrators, uh, the people who are managing the system. That includes only a few people. That is the vice chancellor, myself being the in charge of telling medicine and the director of the IT department. So there's not this right is not given to all the members. So you can see this is the, manage, the management system, which the vice chancellor, this, is, this has been opened from the vice chancellor's account. And you can see the total responses. You can see the patient, their MRM numbers, their sex, their, you know, the area from where they are uh, coming and what um, uh, department they were seen by, what doctor they were seen by at what time and what uh, and if you further click on to the um, uh, uh, link you can open the details of the patient now you can move on to the next slide so uh, when they other way you can approach that is by the attending doctor so this is how the doctor looks at it so he can add a new record he can search a previous patient he can search a patient who's uh, getting a consult from him. He can view the previous history. He can view the record and the investigations which have been shared. So there are ways to share the radiographs, the investigations. He can make new appointments and he can write a prescription. So wow. um, uh, next, uh, the salient features how the, so the, so this is the way, so this is just an example. This was Ali. And Ali was uh, seen by uh, the department of, uh, I think, um, is it mentioned here, by medicine. He's from Atak. Atak is an area, a distant area in Punjab. And he had come with these, these complaints. You can see in the history. And he was advised these medications. And uh, if we could move on to the next slide, that is the form of prescription which he would get. So you can see on the right side the prescription, and in uh, below the uh, the last line on the prescription says in Urdu that if you have any additional problem or your symptoms are not settled, you should immediately report to a local health authority. So I, I believe that we are communicating with the Department of Health hmm. that as the system of health service delivery is coming up. We will be looking more into the legal aspects of it as well. Next, please. So you can see the details and details. And then this, this, uh, this is the portal which a patient can approach. So he can make appointments. And suppose he does make an appointment, you can move to the next slide. And he finds that he is not able to keep up with the appointment. So you can see the various time slots and he selects the slot. It's not uh, available or it has uh, some other commitment, is not able to make it, you can always edit his point. So, this is the appointment uh, uh, letter he's going to get on the uh, So, this is how a patient looks at the point. Next. I wanted to show it live to you, but I was, uh, you know, little, uh, I wasn't sure about the internet. A connection and uh, it's good he that it won't live on the portal. So this is how, and um, this is one of the very interesting things I wanted to share with you. If we move on to the next one, we use these statistics to build up our data. And uh, you can see, uh, I can see the total number of responses. I can see the areas, next please. I can see the areas from where I can get the responses. They are being updated. This is, a previous, this is from a previous stage. You can move on. 
and uh, we can always update it and they are updated in all forms, by charts and bar charts. So you can see the maximum number of patients which are approaching us falls in the 30 and 40 years age probably because of approachability uh, with the technology. Next, the very interesting uh, figures uh, tell you so the males are more as compared to the females. And uh, then what I'm really going to show you, so these are the symptoms with which they have, so these are just statistical you know, data which you see, they are collecting side by side. Next, I want to show you the areas, so, so maximum number of patients are seen by the Department of Medicine. I feel really very proud of that because uh, that, that is my department. And the reason is that uh, usually patients come up with different things. And very interestingly, we are utilizing the uh, interdisciplinary and uh, multidisciplinary approach in managing our patients. So, patients who have come up with diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes, on the medical counter, suppose I see some dermatological lesion, diabetic dermopathy, or I find that he's having an ulcer, diabetic food, or he's having uh, he's in stress. So spiky actually, or he's having sharp joints, so tell you orthopedics, I can have sort of refer the patient anyway. So this is something we really, really enjoy. Because we are sitting all sitting in the same form and we are able to refer the patient to the specialist sitting right next to us on the very spot. So this and is something we are really enjoying. So congratulations you know, for your my apologies for the interjection congratulations for your department's work for uh, 36 percent is services from your or the medicine department great job thank you so much and uh, so, so basically this is a multidisciplinary sort of thing and uh, what do yeah it's something very interesting so only a few areas of pakistan which you can see, you can see the areas of higher percentage so about Generally, we analyze the 14,500 calls, about 50% are from Lahore and its peripheries. And from Pakistan, we have received calls, Dr. Mubi, from more than 75 regions. So, this is something which I really treasure because we are in this way. Because the majority of the places are from Pindi, Bhatia, and uh, from of Chang and Mandi Baudi and Lalia and small places and you know some of the places I didn't know names of between you and me I didn't you know names of some places where there are Xelati, Kotal and they have very interesting places and they were totally underprivileged areas they came to know of our services they would just make a landline code and we were able to at least tell them how to avail the available services. So just like you've got 911, we've got rescue 1122 here. Hmm. We can avail those services, reach the local hospitals. We can tell them what to do. We can tell them when to do it. And we can tell them how to do it. So this is important. And uh, you can see we have a few areas here, but more than 75 areas, regions from Pakistan. And probably the next slide will tell you more than 45 countries across the world and Dr. Well, so you are actually serving globally so you're serving so globally yeah and um and, and these, uh, statistics will tell you to uh, look at them carefully that majority of the expats who are from the working class and who work in the middle east that is saudi arabia uh, Muscat, Oman, um, Kuwait, Bahrain, other majority of uh, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, and then in decreasing order from other countries. But majority of the calls, before they analyze the 45, in fact, there are 47 countries from where we were seeing the calls. And out of that, 67% of the calls were from the Middle East. And these were the poor expats who could not afford the local treatment. They were not receiving 
the uh, medical cover by their appointing employing authority and they did not know the local language so they did not know english they did not know arabic so what they found most comfortable was to pick the phone up on call or make a landline uh, make a whatsapp call and ask us as in their own language urdu punjabi saraiki and you know sindhi and other various languages uh, uh they very good people and you know it's really uh, very heartening when i receive calls from these countries uh only day before yesterday we received a call from australia on the psychiatric counter and that was i would not like to disclose the details of the call but but i just suffice by saying that it was a much needed call and we were able to contact the family of that because uh, when they were called on the whatsapp we got the contact number on our record and we contacted the family of the patient of the person seeking help and we were able really able to help him and uh, i think by the grace of uh, god almighty we were able to stop a catastrophe so uh, i just put it in that much detail and not in further but in the case got it so thank you very much and uh, just a quick note for the cool beans i i'm looking at some of your comments about the audio my apologies we tried our best this morning to make sure that the audio could be better it is not we will probably do another talk later on uh, please bear with me uh, and we understand that audio may not be of the best quality because it is really relaying from my phone at this time so apologies again back to you uh, professor shabir okay okay so we can move on to the next slide and uh, this was uh, we always get feedback from the uh, consults we attended and you can see that we always look at, at the red portion first that two person are still not satisfied so we need to improve our services but it's very again very heartening to see that majority are so there is always room for improvement and i think uh, once we have started to take steps we have grown up from the neonatal to the you know um, infant stage we have started to crawl inshallah we are going to you know rise up and start with but still we are still in the learning phase next phase need to build up on our systems these are very interesting you know uh um, case cases and they were shared with permission uh you can see on the left side this is a report of a patient who came how to be covid pcr he showed us a report on the side and we asked him to get a chest x ray and an hrc and you can see bilateral infiltration that patient who was not willing to move out of his house and uh, we then asked him to report to the nearest health uh, nearest health center and he was treated accordingly so we know our limits when to stop and when to ask tell them now it's time to go to hospital and this was especially so when initially we were admitting all the patients who turned out to be covid then we had to reduce the home isolation policy where certain um only the moderate to severe patients were admitted so this was how it went that uh, this was initially when we would advise the patients on telemedicine when to go and where to go next please and then on other counters so this is uh, the patient sharing this temperature so this 100 by 100.4 and you can see the saturation 83 it had fallen at home and he shared the saturation with, with us and we immediately told him to move to the uh, uh, nearby hospital and we had many calls from the orthopedic counselor counselor this is a patient having a two pain and uh, she was a case of elusus valgus next and these are just examples of what we had you can see this is a very interesting case of covid and he presented with vasculitis so is tinea of the medial half of the hand then we have a lot of patients on the dermatology front and you can see tinea on this female then this is a patient who was covid was put on um, anticoagulants 
and developed uh, 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 ecchymosis. So he shared this picture with us. Next, please. And then uh, I would also like to share here that uh, besides Mayo Hospital, which is the biggest hospital affiliated with King Edward, there were two other hospitals because the load was increasing like anything. And we crossed our limit of 325 patients to 360 patients. So what to do? What we did was we extended our services to the other affiliated hospitals as well. So there's one hospital known as Port Khaja Sayyid Hospital and another is Government Nawaz Sharif Yaki Gate Hospital. So we increased the number of patients, 30 isolation and uh, there were 12 uh, ICU beds in both of these hospitals. So what our doctors would do was they would seek help with our consultants on telemedicine. So this is the data of a patient which has been shared by the consultant who was attending to the patient in Port Khaja Said Hospital with us. He shared the picture of uh, what is happening on the monitor and the ECG changes. If we asked for the ECG, there were changes and the temperature and the vitals and we talked about the... So, you know, there was tele-education, sort of tele-education going on as well. So, we were able to communicate on this forum and then later on on many other fora with our, with our uh, sister hospitals. Next, please. Uh, this is some of the you know treatment modalities so patient who are, he was discharged so what was the diet he, what was the best diet so we would share these charts and you know improve his uh, these pyrometric exercises improve his uh, ventilation experience and uh, then you can see a chart so the patient admitted this would be education for the doctors we'll share it with the patients as well. There's something else I'm very, very interesting, which I'd like to share with you next, if you would. Uh, so, that, so this was tele-vaccination. At the same time, we had enteric fever and vaccination against enteric fever, and then the vaccination against COVID. So we you educated at the same time. Next. So this, this was a very interesting case. This was a case of uh, fracture a complicated case of a fracture which, which was attended by our vice chancellor himself who has special interest in orthopedics being the surgeon. So this call, this was a live call. I actually have the recording of the call that I just thought it best not to share it because of the confidentiality. But this is how, you know, how great the situation might be and the, you know, how they were, patients were advised. Next. So these were the sort of calls we were seeing. And this is again the rounds, various rounds which were being done. Next, please. And you can see our professors and myself and our consultants attending to the calls. Next. So these are the rest of our team members. You can see associate professors and professors standing there. And they were always there. So it's a team. But Dr. Mubin, you, you cannot move without a team. So it was a pure team. Absolutely. This is a very interesting modality we utilized. This was uh, use of WhatsApp. And this was, was for individual critical patients. And these were WhatsApp groups. For example, we can see the one in the middle. Uh, the patient is on the right upper corner. And uh, the, uh, there are three doctors on the group. One, you can see Professor Khalid Masood Gondal. One below in the lower most corner is myself. And there is a pulmonologist. Uh, you can see only this page, Dr. Asdair. We have the three doctors. And in the middle, you have the two relatives of the patient. So whilst the patient is being isolated in his room at home, we would make a conference call over the simple WhatsApp. And in this way, the family would see the doctor, the family would see the patient, the patient would see us, and we would be able to see them. So these were, you can see three examples, and they have been taken with permission. I could not share many, but there were, my phone was, I think, uh, it has almost 150 groups only for COVID. And this wow. was another service which King Edward Medical University was offering at the same time besides this telemedicine department in the university premises. Next, please. So can I... And this service was available 24 
So can I say this, that uh, you uh, and King Edward is the first one in the country who started this service? Uh, it was started in uh, Al Khan University. I see. Uh, but I think it was not carried out with persistence. Uh, mm -hmm. It was started in the uh, University of Health Sciences. Uh, and I think the department is still functional. But uh, the 24 by 7 services are not available. Mm -hmm. So currently, except uh, we are providing 24 by 7 services for Denki because Denki is on the search. Initially, we were doing that for COVID. And we can always uh, provide that whenever whatever disease comes up. Uh, otherwise, all the other uh, departments or the other tele departments are running from 8 to 2 p.m. 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is our professor of uh, uh, psychiatry, uh, uh, Professor Ali Madi Hashmi. And uh, Professor Hashmi, not only along with Professor Nazir Shimran and Professor Aftaba, so the three professors of psychiatry at King Edward. As I mentioned previously as well, they not only served at telepsychiatry, but we were coming across, if you remember, May, June, July, when we were get, getting infected as well. Our families were getting affected. At that time, they provided us with this program of psychological first aid. This was an educational program to the healthcare providers on how to deal with their own stress and how to deal with the stress of the patient this is a wonderful uh, you know uh, modality of uh, you know talking to uh, the uh, healthcare professionals doctors and nurses and paramedics reaching out to them and you know making them talk so this was a great initiative by king edward medical university uh, next please i'm, I'm becoming more Very and more proud department. of my uh, mother university of my alma mater the one that taught me and made me who I am. And th there are so much great initiatives. And just a quick uh, fun fact, before Aga Khan University, cool beans, before Aga Khan University, King Edward used to be the best in the in the country. And then we, we used to say even the Asia. And then uh, Aga Khan came around. And since then, there is always who is the best now. But anyways, Aga Khan is doing great service as well. Uh, Please, back to you, Professor Shibir. Uh, you know, we need uh, to be in the competition to seek for the best. Yes. And it, I'll again quote Mulana Rumi here, uh, 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 what you seek is seeking you. So I think we should, you know, strive for the best. And uh, I'll quote my father here. He would tell me, um, uh, uh, darling, if you try to reach for the stars, you reach the top of the mountain. If you try to reach for the top of the mountain, you would reach the top of the tree. And if you try to reach for the top of the tree, you will reach the middle of the tree. But if you don't go beyond the middle of the tree, you just stay at the bottom. So this is what you tell us that strive for more, strive for more. So we are still, you know, in the struggle to, you know, improve what's used. This is one of the examples uh, we had various, uh, you know, the king of uh, telemedicine, Dr. Suryal Chutai. We asked him to educate us. We had other uh, educational webinars on telemedicine as well. And uh, um, uh, you can see the key people, the key personnel, Professor Sairasal, Professor Ali Madi Hashmi, Professor Halim Masood Bun Sahab, all of us join these webinars and we, we, you know, sort of try to gain out of their experience um, uh, as to how to improvise our system. And um, there were many actually uh, educational webinars for this telemedicine, and this is just one example. Next, please. And, uh, this is another one. This is another one, and we requested Dr. Uh, Ishpak Kukar. He is also a uh, renowned telephysician, and uh, he's basically, I think, um, he's a neurologist, I think. And uh, uh, he uh, established at his center in USA telemedicine. So we asked him to talk to us so that we could, you know, improvise our system. Next. So we are still improving, and uh, this is one of the educations. So you can see, I, 
cannot put uh, before pictures, but these are all my trainees, uh, Dr. Mubeen. And uh, I was telling them how to consult patients on telemedicine. And then I, in the end, I asked them to give a big smile. And this is the moment of that big smile. Love it. And Love uh, it. the big smile was that we, you know, everybody was in stress. So I asked them to use the facial muscles and more and more. And that would help them feel better. So, you know, we kept on approaching each other despite the fact that the hospitals were partially closed and all was COVID, COVID, COVID. But we kept our learning, we kept our teaching, and we kept our interaction with our trainees. So these are all my trainees at each medical ward. And you can see I tried to make them happy. So, there are many dignitaries visited us. We can move on to the next. And they, you know, so we were sort of an ex they were sort of in cult. First picture I think would be of the next piece uh, of the chancellor, the governor, the mastermind. There you can see um, your teacher, Dr. Mubi. Yes. Ajay Sadiq Saha. Absolutely. Was, the yes. Yeah. You can see Professor Mahmood Ali Malik. Yes, your teacher in Mahmood Ali Malik used to be our are, teacher. Uh, uh, um, uh, the oldest graduates of Indian Medical College, and uh, uh, may uh, Allah bless them with good health. And they very often and fondly come to our institute whenever we call them, and they were gracious enough to come to the telemedicine department and share their views. And they were. <laughs> So for the cool beans here, have, when, uh, he must have been your teacher. That's what I was going to say. For the cool beans here, um, when I was... Uh, well, we can move on to the next one. This is a very precious slide, very close yeah. to our hearts. Yeah. And to the hearts of all the Kemphulians. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when I was uh, in medicine, Mahmood Ali Malik Saab was the, the professor at that time. Dr. Mubin, I can't tell you. Yeah, so, so uh, this is another, this probably, yeah, you can see here our health minister, Professor Yasmi Rashid, and she is also a professor of gynecology and must have been your teacher. She was my, yes. uh, she was a professor of gynecology and she must have taught you gynae. Yes. And she's health minister as well. In the middle, you can see the person who's initiated this telemedicine was. And that is the governor of Punjab. And then there were other significant, you know, uh, political uh, government officials who visited us and, you know, encouraged us. Next, please. And this is, uh, you know, dignitary of the armed forces. This is Professor Shahla, uh, Shahla Bakai. She is a major general and she's Professor of Gaini. And she was very uh, positive about these improvements and uh, for in her own words, this is the need of the day and the best use of technology as far as health service delivery is concerned. And then there were people from the Navy as well. Next please. So there was a lot of encouragement when as people come and visit, you can see they encouraged us and they provided support to our hospitals. And this was, uh, this is besides telephones. You can see they provided us with protective tools. When I uh, was coming across this news that in UK and USA, the doctors were not getting um, uh, KN95 and protective kits. Dr. Mubin, there was not a single day that we ran short of these. So this was something uh, very positive that uh, in Pakistan, we never ran short of these kits. That Next is excellent. Case, and then uh, we can move on to the training. We kept on, um, uh, we had international webinars. This was with Brimea. This was with China, Brimea. Belt Road International Map. And Pakistan was the chief guest of uh, this uh, uh, seminar. And it was in person and it was actually one of the eye openers for us because our uh, epidemic had just started at our place. It was back in March. And the Chinese were really kind enough to come and guide us. So next piece. This was a very important webinar. And then we had online webinars with China as well. Continuing online webinars. Next piece. And we had international webinar. This was a, a big international webinar which, where we had participants, consultants from UK, USA, Middle East, Australia, and Canada. 
and uh, you can see our health minister as well as minister for education um, presiding over these webinars. Next, please. And uh, so, so this was how you know the story of COVID was. But it hasn't finished. Dr. Mudin, you talked about uh, our competition with our sister universities in the other provinces. I'm, uh, I didn't mention in the slides, but uh, 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 in the wake of COVID, as a part of steps taken in disaster management, King Edward Medical University was given the 20th rank in uh, one of the WURI Woody Ranks, W U R I, Woody Ranks, World University Ranking uh, for Infectious Diseases, I think it's something like that. And it was recognized for its wow. um, developing plans in it. So you, are, you can be Great. proud of your university. And I think it's because of this uh, eager and the team. The way forward, how my Vice Chancellor, Professor Karl Mr. visualizes it is based is that one, there should be a department of telemedicine on a permanent basis with a professorial chair. So that it can be, you know, it can keep in pace with what's happening across the globe and serve its best. Next. And then as we repeatedly get these infections, dengue and then COVID and all the time, hepatitis B and C and HIV and so on and so forth. There's importance of establishment of centers for infectious diseases. And you would be glad to know, Professor uh, Dr. B, that your institute is being extended. There's a Murid K campus, which is a new campus uh, associated with King Edward Medical University on the Murid K road, that is uh, on the peripheries of Lahore. And it is going to cater with these new subspecialties. And one of the centers which has been planned is Center for Infectious Diseases. Another thing which has, you know, this wound of COVID which has opened our eyes upon is the need for intensive care. So that was something but that was not that much recognized in Pakistan. And now it is being given Betesh. King Edward Medical University is one of the first few uh, universities in Punjab where this department has been recognized for training. So you would be happy in knowing that emergency medicine and intensive care medicine during these wave of COVID, they got their grip in at King Edward Medical University. Very good. Excellent. This is so this makes me so proud and congratulations for all the work and the expansion and the service. This is amazing. And then there was there is another thing which COVID has taught us. We were, you know, sort of uh, the universities. You you would know that the medical colleges, the universities, had to be closed. Students had to be taught online. We would use Google Classrooms and Streamyard and Zoom for holding classes. That was when we felt the need of establishing skills lab, where we can use mannequins for training and uh, teaching students and uh, facilitating them. So skills lab is something new in the pipeline and is being established under the vision of the vice chancellor. And uh, shortly you will be receiving this news that this has been inaugurated. The step one has been taken by the director of medical education, Dr. Professor Abra Rasha and soon you will be hearing this news because this again COVID has taught us that we need to have this at uh, well, at least the bigger institutes of Pakistan. So uh, I think this is the last slide and uh, last but not the least. I would ask you to step on to the next one and I suppose it's the one which I want to, uh, yes, this one. So oh, I really love this quote. No one can whistle. It takes a whole orchestra to play, it, you know. So I think this orchestra consisted of the students, the young doctors, the fraternity, the faculty, the paramedics, nurses. Nobody held back. We had volunteers, we had scouts. We had volunteers from the community. We had philanthropists who were there to help us, to provide us with the necessary equipment, 
to provide us with the necessary um, uh, uh, drugs. And I think that the government of uh, Pakistan never stood back. And uh, I think that uh, despite all the drawbacks, all the you know deficiencies, uh, we jolted into a state where we can see a way forward. So we can see the staircase where we can sort of climb up and improve our system. So this is, uh, I suppose, where I end. You can move on to the next one and probably it says thank you. So no, this is the manager. I think we'll talk about that some other time. And uh, that is basically how the algorithm of our treatment works. So this is uh, all from my side, Dr. Marie. And, thank uh, you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing this. My apologies that there was an audio issue to cool beans to you, Dr. Uh, Professor Shabir, as well. And this is such a wonderful thing. What I kept thinking while your uh, discussion was for the cool beans, we didn't talk about COVID management, but if you can see a country that is less resource as compared to developed countries and how they are evolving and growing as this pressure, as this, uh, as Dr. Uh, Professor Shabir said, as this wound occurred and the light entered, imagine how every country in the world is evolving. It's not just for Pakistan that they are growing. Every country is growing in their own way at this time. Medicine is being looked at again. Medicine, there are, I know there are lots of disputes. I am the victim of many of those at this time. But if you look at the bigger picture, medicine is evolving. Humanity will be better served after such a jolt, such a wound that we are going through. So once again, I salute you, Dr. Professor Shabir, for your work, for the telemedicine work, for having all these uh, team members come together and work honestly and sincerely. I hope, I pray that these efforts stay sincere and are protected from any kind of bad uh, actors, corruption, and other things. And this continues to become the light, not for Pakistan, but for the world as well. I can assure everyone that even in the world, in every country, there is growth and evolution. That is a silver lining of the pandemic and that is a uh, that is a there is a lot of tragedy that is occurring and has occurred and then there is a lot of evolution that is occurring too uh, professor shabir once again thank you very much for being with us i would love to invite you once more and talk more about how you have been managing covid what are your learnings from the management aspect, what kind of symptoms, what kind of diseases, what kind of post-COVID sequelae you are seeing, what are the medicines you are using? So hopefully we can have you once more with us. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mubeen, and uh, I would uh, be you know, uh, privileged and very much honored uh, to come again to your show. And I'm very, very grateful. And um, I hope, uh, this, uh, the whole world is freed from this disease now. <laughs> it's high time that you know, we are out of it because we want to move forward. Correct. And uh, looking forward to come. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you very much. And Cool Beans, thank you very much as well. Uh, thank you for your time. We are here today. I would see if I can uh, join you in the evening. But generally, keep in mind that we may not do a lecture today evening because we just did this now. And once again, Professor Shabir, thank you very much. Bye-bye uh, for now. Most welcome. Most welcome.